Welcome back, trainers. So we're going to have ourselves a nice Team Go Rocket event this Sunday. I'm enjoying this whole deal that Niantic is implementing with the grunts and then collecting the components and then eventually fighting the bosses and then fighting Giovanni. The one thing that I wish I could have changed was making Giovanni a little bit tougher and possibly with six Pokemon. So what's going to be taking place is every single Pokestop is going to be corrupted by the grunts. This is going to be going down from 11 until 1 p.m. your local time, the 24th on Sunday. So basically, you're going to be able to get the components a whole lot faster. So you're going to be able to battle Sierra, Cliff, or Arlo, and then eventually make your way up to Giovanni. So if you're kind of still stuck on this looming in the shadows task, now is the time to take advantage of it. Because yes, it can be kind of tedious to go around and collecting all these opponents and then having to do it all over again to fight all of these rocket leaders now initially we went in here with articuno that's the, the you know ultimate prize going up against giovanni you're going to get the shadow articuno but the only problem was the ivs could be completely whack uh but that's okay it is what it is i still enjoyed it i was not doing this for the articuno i wanted to battle giovanni you guys you know the longtime watchers i've been talking about some sort of quest going up against giovanni like this for some time so I'm absolutely ecstatic by this whole experience. Now, can we possibly see a new Shadow Legendary coming in? Are we going to possibly see Moltres or Zapdos? I don't think so, not quite yet. But, and that's a big but, let's take a look at these notes that Niantic did give us here. Trainers can receive Giovanni Special Research once per calendar month. For example, if you complete the September Giovanni Special Research in mid-November, you'll receive a new Special Research shortly after. If you complete the September research in mid-September, you'll need to wait until mid-October 1st, local time, to receive the research again. So what I think is going to be happening here is we're going to see a recycle of the same Looming in the Shadows for the people that have already completed it. So we're going to be able to do it all over again. So currently it is November. So as of now, we're not going to really be able to do the Looming in the Shadows all over again if you've already completed it, but that's not going to stop you from going out there and possibly trying to get yourself one of those shiny Shadow Pokemon from one of these Team Rocket leaders. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at some battles here. I'm going to be going up against these leaders using 1500 CP Pokemon and regular Pokemon all alike. So for this first round, we're going to be going up against Sierra here, starting it off with 1500 CP. I do make that switch in the beginning, and what happens when you do that is enabling you to freeze the opponent instead of going in here with the Lucario and barely having any health at the end of this or maybe not even being able to finish it with the Lucario. I'm now going to have energy and be able to do damage onto that next Pokemon here. The Probo Pass is fine. It's fine if it lost a little bit of health. It's still going to do what it needs to do. You'll see here in just a moment. Now, Lapras can be pretty difficult to take out with 1500 CP Pokemon. And I've already stated this before, but I'll state it again. I am still looking for that Charm Gardevoir. What I really want to find is obviously the Sneasel, because that's always going to be in the beginning, Lapras, and then Gardevoir with Charm. I want to see if it is possible to do that with 1500 CP Pokemon, because it's going to be quite the challenge. I absolutely love it. The only downfall to this is if it's too difficult and I continue to try over and over again, I burn through all my potions and revives, which I'm okay on revives now, but as far as the, the potions go, <laughs> I'm a little low. But thank goodness we do have super effective week in effect currently in which you're going to be getting more potions from those Pokestops. Anyways, we're going to be able to finish this off barely with the Swampert. One shield left and we didn't have to use our charge move at the end. We just finished it off with quick moves. And also remember, you're going to be able to purchase the Rocket Radar and look for these Rocket Boss leaders right off the bat. You can just purchase that in the shop and just go hunt them down without finding those components. But here is the catch. You're going to actually have to complete the whole component deal one time for you to be able to see it in the shop. So starting it off here, we're going into Cliff. Started with the Metacham and did a couple quick moves and then we're going to be switching into Lucario here. You know, the whole freeze trick. And we're using 1500 CP again. So Sand Slash, I think that's probably going to be on the easier end, right? Definitely want to use Grass or Water types, but at this point, we're locked in with the Lucario. So we went in blind. I didn't know what it had. I just picked the Medichan, the Lucario, and uh, the Swampert here. Swampert's fantastic. And if you didn't see my last video going over how we're going to get all of the Community Day Pokemon in December, maybe you should go check it out. Swampert is going to be high up on that list. 
absolutely fantastic. Not just for PvP, but going up against gyms and raids as well as the grunts here. Take a look. I wouldn't need, well, I guess you can call them grunts. They're more like the admins, the leaders, but anyways, the Swamper is just fantastic. It does call for water gun going up against raids, but personally, I think you should go with the mud shot if you're doing any sort of PvP because it's going to be charging that hydro cannon extremely fast. So we're going to be able to finish off that uh, Infernape with the Metacham. Very nice. And Cliff, he's hilarious when he loses. Kind of reminds me of the Hulk. Look at him. <laughs> I have a feeling he's a gentle giant. Maybe he, he was done wrong some point in time and he turned to... Uh, Team Rocket. Uh, that's just the vibe I'm getting off of him. He seems like just a big old teddy bear. Anyways, going on to another cliff battle here. Let's see what we have going on. I mean, he literally starts off with a Meowth. Somewhat of a teddy bear. <laughs> All right. So going in with Lucario, I don't think we're going to make that switch in the be beginning. We're just going to run all the way through. Remember, you don't need to hit those, you know, bubbles for the first two shields. But make sure you keep track because you don't want to not hit them when you're supposed to. So as you can see, we are definitely not using 1500 CP Pokemon in under for this one. Uh, some of these I just kind of wanted to get it over with and or relatable for other trainers because like we went over doing other uh, rocket leaders, not everybody is equipped to do this with 1500 CP. So bringing in the Hydreigon here, it will be able to resist that lick on the Snorlax and we're just gonna bite it down. Now I went into this blind, so I didn't know it was at the end and that Snorlax almost takes me out now we do go for that uh, Dragon Pulse here. Obviously the Dark Pulse wouldn't have done much and the Tyranitar is able to finish this off. We got two fighters in the back. Now I make a dumb mistake here, check this out. Don't ever get too greedy. I could have hit that Dynamic Punch and finished it off easy money and uh, still had two Pokemon, but we just go in there with the Lucario and hit a couple counters and take them out. So fighting types are gonna be probably one of your best options going up against Cliff for sure. Uh, going up against Sierra, it really does vary. Um, I mean, if she has Hypno and Alakazam, you're going to be looking fantastic with possibly Tyranitar, Biting Crunch, right? Simple as that. You can get, you know, special with it, use all kinds of different Pokemon that are dark. But uh, personally for me, I like using Sphylus. So we are going to be going with 1500s this time around. And as you can see, the Lucario is almost fainted. Uh, and that's why I like to do that switch in the beginning so it doesn't just faint out on the Sneasel, right? So we're going to bring in the Swampert here and uh, just do some charge moves and wait for the opponent to use that charge move because it will be freezing in which we're gonna be able to finish it off with quick moves. Remember to always take advantage of the opponent using the charge moves. After they do use them, use a couple of quick moves. Don't get off your charge quite yet. So you can get a little bit more energy to possibly get off another charge move. So the Sphylus is putting in work here, as you can see. And we're gonna go ahead and hit that Dark Pulse. Yeah, I did purchase a secondary move on it. You just ha I just have to have one ready, personally for myself. I know it's expensive, uh, 75,000 for that secondary move and the candies are just rare, right? They're rare in general. And in comes the Houndoom, but at this point we have so much energy racked up. Check this out. One Hydro Pump, ah, ah, ah. Two Hydro Pump, ah, ah, ah. Three, <laughs> okay. So uh, you can clearly see Swampert is absolutely magnificent really enjoy using it so we're able to take that out uh pretty sure this was the night we were hunting arlo's so i can make that uh tutorial video and is also the night that scarlet witch and myself did get our shiny shadow sight there's absolutely incredible all right so going into the next one here we have sierra so we're just going to go ahead and find what so of course we are going to be going in here with the normal cp pokemon for this one and if you're thinking to yourself, I see you using Lucario all the time for these. I don't have one of those. What could I use as a substitute? Machamp, guys, is going to be pretty good as well. See, now here's the difference between Machamp and Lucario. Lucario can hit those charge moves a little bit quicker, but Machamp could almost get to them almost as fast. And it's going to be lasting longer because Machamp is bulkier than Lucario. So you're not going to be able to burn the shields as much, but you're still going to be able to last a little bit longer and almost do just as good as Lucario, right? Anyways, in goes the Lapras and we're putting in work with the Lucario power-up punch. It's a lot different when you have completely maxed out Pokemon 
as opposed to 1500 CP, obviously, right? As you can see, Lucario is just making work of her whole team. I think I might be able to even finish it here. Oh, never mind. Down I go from the fire vein. <laughs> so I do pick Hydreigon again. I just like using it. I, I made one, so I like to use it whenever I can, right? It's going to be a better uh, offensively than Tyranitar, but defensively, Tyranitar is definitely going to be outpacing uh, the Hydreigon because it is bulkier. Anyways, taking a look at another Sierra. Pretty sure this is going to be a 1500 CP run here. Clefable, Lucario, and Blastoise. This is going to be the last one, I do believe. So we have Clefable in the front. We're going to do a couple of charms. Switch into Lucario. You know that trick here. Freeze up the opponent. And then we're going to just do as much damage as we can, as well as burning those shields here. And we almost take it out. Now, this is good anyways. All right. So instead of it getting in another attack and bringing us down into the red, uh, we're able to finish it off with the yellow health there. All right, so in comes the Sableye. So at this point, I planned it all perfectly. We went in with the Sableye, we made the switch, but we are switch lock at this point, but that's okay. Lucario did its job, it burned the shields, we took out the Sneasel. Now we can bring in the Blastoise, get a couple of moves, freeze the opponent when we switch, get in those charms, the is gonna faint, that's fine. Gain a little bit more energy with Blastoise. In comes Houndoom, and we're gonna farm it just a little bit, and now we're gonna get off these Hydro Cannons, and you're like, well, what's the difference between uh, Swampert and Blastoise? I mean, which one should I really go with? Blastoise has the bulk. It can't get to Hydro Cannon as fast, but Swampert's going to be able to get to the Hydro Cannon extremely fast without that bulkiness. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Share it with your friends if you found it useful. Turn on notifications so you can stay up to date, and I will be catching you all next time. Take care.